How Expert! Top 10 Epoxy Resin Art Tips. How Expert publishes quick how to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more How Expert Top 10 videos in the future. Moving on, let's talk about the How Expert Top 10 Epoxy Resin Art Tips. Number 10. Only use plastic tools. Air bubbles are the ultimate enemy of resin art. Use a plastic knife to stir the hardener into the resin instead of a wooden stick, which is commonly suggested online. The porous texture of wood creates tiny air bubbles throughout the wet resin that are even more difficult to remove than typical air bubbles. Equally important, your mixing container must be plastic, as wet epoxy resin doesn't stick to plastic, making these vessels reusable and easy to clean. Number 9. Stir the hardener into the resin slowly and patiently. The mixing process may seem slow and tedious, but it sets the foundation for quality resin. Start by stirring slowly in one direction for at least two minutes, although I found stirring for three to four minutes mitigates air bubbles and fully integrates the hardener within the resin. The combination of resin and hardener will appear streaky at first, but as the ingredients fuse, your mixture should appear completely transparent, likely with some of those pesky air bubbles. Number eight. Always pour a thin layer of resin before setting any additives. One of the most disappointing feelings is demolding a finished product only to find bare areas. To avoid this frustration, always pour a thin layer of resin into your mold before adding any additives. After you set the first round of embellishments, continue to pour the resin until every additive is covered and an even layer of resin has been set. Pro tip, if you're working in layers, let each layer become gel-like one to six hours before pouring the next layer. Although if you let a layer completely cure, you must sand the hardened layer to give the next layer something to bond to as wet resin does not adhere to smooth cured resin. Number seven, experiment with casting pressed flowers or leaves, sea glass, crystals, non-paper stickers and foils, glitter, alcohol ink dyes, layers, etc. When I first started working with resin, I struggled with finding constant online material that fit my resin style. It took first-hand trial and error to figure out the overall do's and don'ts of setting embellishments. Flowers and leaves must always be pressed and dry before setting. Otherwise, the flower will turn brown and rot inside your piece. Never use paper-based materials, as the additive will dampen and rise to the top of your mold. There is a large market for foils, which are essentially non-paper stickers that will stay put after setting. As for glitter, which notoriously sinks to the bottom of any mold, allow your resin to gel approximately 45 minutes to an hour before adding your glitter. Have fun experimenting with all the unique ways to work with resin and find what aligns with your style. Pro tip, remember that anytime you're working with additives, place everything face down because once you demold, the bottom of the mold essentially becomes the top. Number six, the resin to hardener ratio is extremely precise. The biggest culprit of uncurable resin is an off-balance resin to hardener ratio. Typically, the ratio is 1 to 1 or 2 to 1 resin to hardener, although it can vary. The leeway for error is very small, as the epoxy resin will not harden if there's too much or too little of any one ingredient. I recommend using plastic cups with measuring marks in ounces to accurately measure out the hardener. I've had the most success when I measure out the resin into a mixing container with measuring ticks, measure out the hardener in a separate plastic cup, and then pour into the resin mix. There are all kinds of online resin calculators to determine the proper ratio for your resin and scope of use. Number five, always clean your molds before use. 
The last thing you want to find in your final product is some random speck of black that is impossible to remove. Wet resin picks up even the smallest particles, so your mold must be squeaky clean before use. Always rinse your mold with cold water and pat dry before pouring. Then use tape to remove any remaining impurities. Keep in mind, while you're working with wet resin, dust and other air particles may fall into your pieces. So I recommend having a pointed tip on hand, such as a pin or tweezers. Place your mold in a plastic storage box beforehand so that you don't have to bother moving the wet resin. Place the lid over the molds once you're ready to wait for the resin to cure for the next 36 to 72 hours undisturbed. Number four, temperature is everything. The warmer the temperature, the faster the resin cures. When I first started working with resin, I was using my balcony during the summer, clocking in around 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit daily, where my resin would begin to gel as soon as 45 minutes. This is great when creating a layered piece, but it decreases your window of opportunity to work. On the other hand, if you're working with resin in an environment below 70 degrees, your piece probably won't cure properly, as the ideal working temperature for most resins is between 75 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. In the case of cooler temperatures, I suggest putting the bottle of resin in a Ziploc bag and then place the bag into a warm bowl of water, about the same temperature you'd use for a bath, and leave it there for 10 to 20 minutes. Never warm the hardener, as this may cause it to become yellowish. Number three, use a heat source to pop out air bubbles. This specific tip is a game changer. Air bubbles are the arch nemesis of any resin artist. While these little air pockets of evil will inevitably pop up in wet resin, using a heat source is an efficient, effective means of removing as many as possible. The process of popping every little bubble with a sharp pointed pin was tedious and frustrating, as most of them would resurface elsewhere within seconds of getting popped. I have found using a heat source, such as a heat gun for crafts, removes most of the air bubbles and keeps many of them from reappearing. Hover your heat source a few inches above the resin and never stay in one area for more than five seconds, as your mold could easily melt. Items already found in your home, such as a blow dryer or a lighter, can also serve this purpose. Although more caution is needed when using a blow dryer, as its power could easily displace the wet resin. Pro tip! Before you pour the resin hardener into your molds, zap the cup with heat to mitigate any air bubbles from the start. Number two, understand the possible health threats and the necessary precautions to take. It is vital to your well-being to understand the potential health dangers of breathing in resin fumes or getting it on your skin. Repeated contact of resin with skin may have long-term effects such as dermatitis. So if your skin comes in contact with resin, stop everything and immediately cover the area with baking soda and rinse well. Take these precautions very seriously, because the last thing you'd want is to fall in love with this art and never be able to enjoy it again because your skin flares up whenever you're around the fumes. Proper protective clothing, such as a ventilator or barrier mask, nitrile gloves, long sleeves, pants, and safety glasses, the fumes of the resin can be absorbed through your eyes, are absolutely necessary. Your workspace must be in a well-ventilated area, like near a big window, or an outdoor space, like a shed or a balcony, with a door to keep out pets and disturbances. Have rubbing alcohol nearby, as this is the best way to clean up spilled resin. When you have leftover uncured resin, you can either wipe away the remaining resin with rubbing alcohol and wash the container with warm soapy water, or you can set your mixing container upside down and wait for the resin to cure so you can peel it away later on. Both methods are safe and effective. Never throw away any leftover wet resin in your sink or your drain, as it will cure and then clog your pipes. Pro tip, consider using non-toxic home-safe resin that exudes no fumes or airborne toxins. 
such as the Art Resin brand. Number one, think through your entire process from beginning to end. Know your every step. Working with resin, especially for the first few times, is both exciting and nerve-wracking. Since you're working under a time constraint and with a potentially harmful substance, you must know what you're doing and what your next steps look like. Although the preparation process isn't nearly as fun as the excitement of pouring and creating, it is equally as important. While the resin bottle is warming up, prepare your space and floor with wax paper. Resin won't stick to anything that's water resistant. And gather all your supplies, which may look something like this, but not limited to wax paper, tape, plastic cups, plastic mixing containers, plastic knives, a timer, a pin or tweezers, resin, hardener, molds, additives, embellishments, dyes, plastic storage box with lid, heat source, baking soda, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl, old rags, and protective gear. Once you've got some rounds under your belt, you'll start to learn what methods work best for you and your practice. Don't be too hard on your result. And remember this, behind every flawless resin piece, there are hundreds of mess ups and redos that you'll never see. If you liked our video, be sure to click like and subscribe for more How Expert Top 10 videos for all topics from A to Z in the future. Also, let us know what other topics you want us to do a How Expert Top 10 video in the future in the comments below. Thank you. Have an amazing day and take care. How Expert publishes quick how to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more.